is that you bestow it upon us. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the needs of the people. We pray for these prayer requests, for the Bible says that we're to ask God, and that God will hear our petitions and hear our prayers. We pray for all these requests that were made mention. We pray that God will have his way upon these requests. And remember these people. I heard a request this morning about family members that are not doing well and they've been sick and neighbors that are sick, God. I pray for one called Ron that has set this, that he'll recover from the sickness, God. Lord, also I pray for others for salvation for the families. And I pray for the unspoken requests as well as all the spoken requests. I pray that God will have his way upon this service today. As we invite the Holy Spirit to always be with us. For wherever two or three will gather the spirit, in the spirit of the Lord, that, that the Lord said himself, he would be here. And we just give God the glory and God the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. When the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart, I will sing my day to say.
the name of the Lord. Amen. Sister Richardson, so very much. Amen. 
your Savior alive. I see the myths are happening. Anniversary here for two. I married them not too long ago. I'm probably about, I'm guessing, 10 years. That's been about 10 years, so. I don't see any relatives here, so I can't remember. Yeah. About well, seven, yeah. seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. It's been seven years. Then, huh? okay. Feels like ten years. <laughs> Time goes fast, doesn't it? Anyway, if you see the mints, uh, congratulate them on their anniversary. Would you do that? And I see some others coming up, and we'll remember them as we come to it. Later on through the month. Amen. Daylight savings time. Yes. Again. Put up 30 minutes and leave it alone forever. How many of you would? Just go 30 minutes one way or the other. Yes. Split the difference and call it good. Yep. How many in agreement with that? Yes. Wait a minute, Pastor. That's common sense. That don't make sense to them in Washington. What do you say? <laughs> I'm picking on those guys in Washington. And so anyway, but that's too easy. Things that are common sense are too easy to figure out. So I was thinking they're spending all these millions and billions of dollars just to change the time. I found out they want to save some money. Just put it in one place and leave it. Can't say no to that. Amen. But guess what? It's coming. And what do we do? We got to obey and do it. Can you say amen? So let's change it back. Now, if you come to church next Sunday, if you come out this time, you're going to be late. <laughs> All right? So I'm giving you a fair warning. So in, in the spring, it springs forward an hour. So you're going to lose an hour of sleep this coming Saturday. Now, I don't know why they don't do that on Friday night. How many? That would work out better. Yeah. Would you guys think yeah. so? Yeah. Yeah. To me, that would work out better on Friday night. Because I don't have to be anywhere on Sunday. <laughs> but you know how it is. So we'll be praying for the time uh, pacers or the time setters, we'll call it that way. And so remember that time is changing. And uh, we'll be gone for a few days coming here in, uh, towards the end of the month. Uh, I'll be gone from Monday to Friday. I'm going to see my daughter and uh, granddaughter and son-in-law. And the other grandson, too. So you guys pray for us that we have a safe trip. But Lyman will be filling in for me for the Bible study. So here's your chance. Come on. And uh, he said, Pastor, you shouldn't have said anything. Nobody had come no. <laughs> Too late. It's already done. So you prove them wrong. Come out to the Bible study. Would you do that? Come out to the Bible study. Amen. If he offers free pizza, everybody will show up. Naughty pastor. Naughty pastor. Yeah. Well, Lyman, would you come up and uh, share what the Lord has given to you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to compliment those of you that contributed. A few weeks back from this pulpit, I asked for 10 families to write a check for $35 to take care of the changing of the overhead, adding one, repairing this one, and uh, using this one to go to the back wall. We did it. You did it. Uh, I was talking with, the, with the Sister Connie just before the service started this morning. And I asked her, I said, did we get the money yet? And she says, yep, it's all in. So thank you for contributing for the overhead, which will help us to have a bright, brighter uh, screen to watch, and then we'll help those on the platform, like uh, when we sing a song, the words will be up on the back wall, so they won't have to be guessing sometimes as to what <laughs> word goes where. Uh, I've shared with you in the past 
Then the wife sent me to the grocery store to get a loaf of bread. I have to have a list. I was just one track line. And I was sharing in class this morning, I cannot multitask. It's just not in me. Because one of our pupils was multitasking. And she was busy doing church work and trying to do the Sunday school lesson too as well. And uh, of course, you know, the church work comes first. And so I commented about, I understood when I called on her to do a portion of the Sunday school lesson that uh, I saw she was multitasking. And I explained that I was not able to do that. Uh, I was handed a note just prior uh, to my coming up to her that uh, the pastor and Margie uh, are making a trip to Idaho and uh, they could help a little on the finances for that trip. So uh, you have from now until uh, the end of the month if you want to contribute uh, to help them on finances on that trip, uh, it will be appreciated. That's all I'm going to say about that for now. Good morning, uh, Winston, Oregon. Good morning. Wow, that's pretty close to Roseville. Last week we had Roseville, and so this morning we're uh, being watched. I understand this is live. I didn't realize that. Yes. I thought it was going on tape and then sent off, and so I thought it would be a few hours later. But I was talking with on the phone with. One of our regulars is not able to come uh, for the live service here this morning. And she said, no, it's the same time. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was new to me. Uh, so anyway, we're going to continue. This will be my last reading for a while in Second Peter. And I trust you, as I break this down a few verses at a time, that uh, most of you are are uh, uh, getting some of the end time that Peter well, uh, tells us about. So again, we're in 2 Peter chapter 3, and this morning we'll pick it up, the last two verses of that, uh, verse 17 and 18. And so this morning, this is what Peter tells us. Ye therefore, beloved, see ye know these things before, Beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. And if you recall, Peter's been writing the portion of scripture that I've been reading from. He's been uh, describing some of the events of the last day. Would the ushers come forward this morning as we receive this morning's tithes and all? If uh, any of you have a special prayer request, feel free to let it be known. We can put you on the prayer chain. And that prayer chain goes probably as far no further than what this service is doing this morning. So let us pray over the tithes and offerings this morning. Lord, uh, we thank you for your faithfulness. You sent us another sunshiny day. And Lord, it uh, makes us appreciate the little rains we're making. And Lord, uh, you have provided for each and every one of us. And we ask now, Lord, that you receive our tithes as we pay them to you, Lord and our offerings that we give them to you. Bless, bless us, Lord, with your presence. Bless us, Lord, as cheerful givers, and let your will be done in every heart and life. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm so glad that the Lord is with us today. How about you? Amen. Well, we're going to do an old classic for you.
Well, I believe one brother already has a song. Amen.
but it's probably a difficult situation, especially with that virus. But a lot of people are starting to get the vaccine now. I know several of you said that you've gotten it this past week. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, some of you shared to me that your arm is a little bit sore. But hey, uh, at least you got the vaccine. Amen? Amen. Encouraging people to, to get it, take it, if you can. And that way you won't, especially you that have a weak immune system, you probably should have it. Because your system is so weak. And... Uh, that means if you got breathing problems, anything, any type of problem like that, heart problems, you probably should go ahead and uh, get the immunization, all right? And uh, that's my encouragement for you to do that. I think I'm going to wait for the one shot when it comes. And I hear there's a one shot coming. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Some of you are taking the two shot already or have taken it. And your first shot, my daughter's already took both shots. She said the second one's a little bit, it seemed like a little bit rougher than the first one. And I'm not for sure if, for sure if it's just her or, you know, how, how it played out on her, her particular body. But uh, different people have taken it. And so far, there's been really no side effects. Except I have read some stories about mothers that are pregnant, all right? And I've heard some stories about uh, some of the babies uh, not doing too well. So I would really encourage a mother, especially a mother that's pregnant, uh, to talk to her doctor before she takes that shot. All right? That's my encouragement there. I've heard some uh, special side effects, miscarriages, things of that nature I've heard. And so I was reading on a news article the other day. Can't tell you. If it's 100% sure or fact, I don't know. It's just something I read, all right? And I would just strongly precaution, uh, especially a family if they're going to have a baby, uh, talk to their doctor first, all right? Isn't that wise decision when you yeah. say? Praise the Lord. And we just want to encourage those that are watching us. Uh, our viewership has been growing, not only in Idaho, but also in the Tennessee area. And also the Oregon area. A lot of people are watching it from Roseburg, Winston, down to Albany, uh, Lebanon, Sweet Home. Those areas people are starting to watch. I think they, uh, there's many of them are probably uh, family are starting to connect uh, to this broadcast. And I want to say thank you to my family for uh, tuning in on the broadcast. It makes me feel good as a pastor and also as one of the family members, all right? And so we're looking forward to the day when we, this vaccine will take place and the virus will be behind us. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And where everybody can come back to church. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Can you say amen? amen? Where everybody will be able to come back. And because I find out if you're gone a long, long time, it's hard to motivate yourself to come back. How many found that out? Yes. And we don't have a, a spirit of fear, but a spirit of God in our life. Amen. A spirit of hope. And this is what we want to transmit this day and translate it into the, our viewership, that we're a people of hope. And I don't know about you, but I've been preaching a series. Amen. Today's hope is tomorrow's faith. Today's hope is tomorrow's faith. And we're picking up on the next part of this. And as we look at it, uh, we're just blessed because we live in a day and time where we can still come to church. Can you say amen? Yeah. And I, it wouldn't bother me if I had a police officer outside. It wouldn't bother me at all. Uh, matter of fact, I would welcome him or her in. Can you say that? Yeah, and I've had police officers attend the church before. I surely have. I have a lot of police officers over the years. They're friends of mine. Appreciate them a lot. Amen. Good godly people. Praying people. Go to church people. I want you to know that a lot of your police officers go to church, serve the Lord, 
not only serve the Lord, but serve their community. A lot of firemen do the same thing, and, and paramedics and doctors. I want you to know they're all godly people. A lot of them are. And so anyway, uh, it wouldn't bother me if one was out there unless he was trying to keep me or she was trying to keep me from coming inside. And that would become a problem for me. Do you understand? Amen. And I thank God in America we don't have that type of problem. Amen. Can you say amen? We have freedom of religion. Amen? amen. amen. It's one of our rights. And I praise God for that. I appreciate the founding fathers when they were writing up the articles of the Declaration of the United States. <laughs> that they put that particular article in there. One of the bills of rights, you might call it, the freedom of religion. They said, whatever you want to practice your religion, that's fine. We're not going to make it a state religion. Everybody has a right. And I have a right to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. How many agree with me? Can you say that? Not only is the Son of God, but He's God in the flesh. Someone asked me, he said, well, how in the world can He be God? Well, if He's God's Son, that makes Him God. Can you say amen? We'll just take it like that, by faith. And I praise the Lord we can come into a church and give God glory and worship Him and praise Him and thank Him for the goodness He brought upon our country, upon our nation. And thank the Lord for all the promises he made us. I don't know about you, but I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and my strength. Amen. Yes. Would you pray with me today? Father God, yes. I thank you for this time that I could come to you and that I worship you again. And I call upon your holy name where you said you are holy. You're a holy God. And you directed us to be holy. For he said, be ye holy. For I am holy, saith the Lord. And so, Father God, you are a holy God. And I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Who gave his life on a cross. Who died and resurrected. And now he sat at the right hand of the almighty God. Making intercession before us. I thank the Lord for being here with us today. I pray for this congregation and I pray for this word of God. Let my lips be thy lips. Let my thoughts be thy thoughts. Let my eyes be your eyes. Let my heart be your heart, O God. That I completely submit myself to thee, O God, and to thy Holy Spirit. I give you praise and glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Would you give him a clap of praise? Today's hope is tomorrow's faith as we continue. When all hope is gone, have you been there? Have you ever come to the point of saying, why do it? It doesn't make any difference anymore. I think I will give up or quit or say forget it. How many ever said that? Oh, forget it. I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm tired of struggling with the situation. How many have been there before? Well, today's sermon is just for you. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the power of God here today. Hallelujah. Why not just give up? Why don't we say quit? And move on. You know why? Because we have hope. Can't you say amen? We have hope that we will come through the day. We have hope that we will see another tomorrow. We have hope because of Jesus Christ. We have hope because it's a blessed hope, the Bible calls it. He calls it a blessed hope. I don't know about you, my friends, but Jesus Christ is with us today. So wherever two or three would gather. He said, I would be in the midst of you. 
I will be with you, the Lord says. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the most end of the world. I'm with you, Jesus said. Jesus is with us. Could you give him a praise <laughs> of Someone will keep going tomorrow because you prayed for them tonight. Can you say amen to that? You prayed for them. That's why they're going to keep going. You prayed for them. Oh, I love the Lord. How about you? Number one, what goes through the mind just before giving up? Acts chapter 27, verse 20. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, no small tempest beat on us. All hope that we would be saved was finally given up. All hope that we would be saved we finally gave it up, the Apostle Paul said. He said, we struggled with the storm. We struggled with it. We thrown everything overboard to keep from sinking. The sails are run. There's, we're being driven by the wind. The sails were destroyed. Everything was gone of value. There is nothing left but the life of the Prisoners, because there was a prison ship. There was nothing left but the lives of the sailors because they're the ones that were taking care of the ship to keep it floating. Finally came to the point the when the, the hurricane force completely almost destroyed the ship to nothing. It was reduced to nothing. For 14 days, they were being moved by the waves and by the wind bouncing to wherever they could go, wherever the wind would take them. And finally, the apostle Paul wrote this. And he said, now when neither sun nor stars appear, he said, no small tempest. He said, it was great. It was violently huge tempest. He said, all oh, hope that we would be saved was finally given up. He said, we give it up. We realized that we were going to die. We realized this was the end of the road. We realized we're at the end of our road. And they wondered which next wave would sink the ship. Which next wave would be the final blow to the bow of the ship that would cause it to go down. But I believe God sent an angel down there. And that angel was holding the bow of that ship as the winds came. The Bible doesn't say it, but I believe God did that. Sometimes we come to the point where there's nothing else left. And we feel like this is it. I'm going to die. This is the end of it for me. And out of nowhere, God begins to bring victory back into your life. Can you say amen? God begins to bring hope back into your life. Would you give the Lord a praise of <laughs> Now hope does not disappoint 
Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Our hope will not disappoint us. Why? Because our hope is Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? He is my hope and my salvation. He is my stronghold. He is my fortress. Someone say amen, Romy. Am I the only one getting this today? Come on, church of God. Come on. I told you a story one time. Two preachers were kind of debating whose church is going to go to heaven first. And the first preacher said, my church is going first. They said, how do you see that? He said, because the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. And he said, my church is the deadest church in town. <laughs> do you want to be the deadest church in town? No. no. Then you need to amen me. Can you say amen? amen. You need to raise your hand to glory. Can you say amen? You need to act like you're still saved. Someone say amen. Lord. Amen. You need to act like you got the Pentecostal Jubilee in your life. Someone say amen. Lord. Amen. You need revival, church of God. You need revival in your heart. You need revival. You need to come back to God. Can you say amen? You need to come back and let God have you. You need to turn your pour your heart out to God. You need to come before Him in these last days. Oh, Pastor, I would, but I just don't feel like it. <laughs> Hello, I'll tell you what, you'll feel better if you raise those hands. Oh, yeah. hey. You'll feel better if you raise them up to Jesus. And say, Jesus, give me hope again. Give me hope, Jesus. Give me hope. Can you imagine two weeks on the ship going all around the place in circles at times as the wind probably grabbed a hold of the ship like a twister? And just twisting it around and spinning it on the ocean. Can you imagine those poor souls? Think at any moment, especially those prisoners that were locked in their shackles down in the bottom of the ship in the bow. And at any moment they thought, man, I'm going to drown with these shackles. This is the way I want. I'll never see my family again. I'll never see my loved ones. Some of the prisoners probably started thinking. I said, who in the world of my family would even want to see me? Because I'm locked up in these chains. Paul spoke up. He spoke to the satirian. The captain of the guard, he spoke to the shipmaster, and he spoke to the captain of the ship. He said, you should have listened to me. I told you if we sail out on this ocean that we're going to lose everything. We're going to lose everything. Everything that's value. But you would not listen to me. How many have heard that before? Mm -hmm. I told you. Yeah, I know what you did. Don't rub it in on me. <laughs> I know you told me. I know you said it. I know what happened. And I don't know how many times my grandsons, they finally quit coming around because I kept telling them, I told you. <laughs> One of them took back off to Pullman because I told him. <laughs> I told you. I know, Grandpa. I'm out of here. The apostle looked at him and said, I told you. Sirs, I perceive in my spirit that we're going to lose everything. We're going to lose the ship. And probably all of our lives. But you wouldn't listen to me. How many ever told someone something? They ask you for your opinion. You tell them. They turn around mm -hmm. and they won't heed to it or listen to it. And then after they go ahead and do it, it all falls apart and they come back to you. And you tell them, I told you. Hello. Yes. Say amen or ouch. Ouch. <laughs> ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Ouch. 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 
Ouch. That hurts. Oh, boy. The Apostle Paul said, I told you. Ouch. Yeah, I know you told us. The centurion really listened in on him. Mm. The Roman garrison guard. He listened to him. He said, I should have listened to you. He didn't say that, but I know what he felt. He said, I should have listened to you. As they struggled on the waters, spinning around and around like we do when we're out of God's will, someone say amen or on me. Amen. How many times we spin around and around and around like that ship did on the waters? God tells us, I told you. I told you, don't, don't buy that. I told you, don't quit that job. I told you, shouldn't do that. <laughs> How many have heard the Spirit tell you? Oh, yeah. Warn you, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. And we go ahead and do it. Our hope will not disappoint us because it's hope in Jesus. Hope is our anchor for the soul. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 says, hope is our anchor. They didn't have an anchor. If they had, it was dragged away. Whatever anchor they had was gone completely. Why? Because they were spinning and spinning. They were in such deep water, the anchor wouldn't have done them no good anyway. Hello. As we continue, we're born again with this hope. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For we are saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Hope is invisible, but you can feel it. You can sense it. You can believe it. Man, that scripture perfectly illustrates what hope is. For we are saved in hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. I call it wishing. For, I, for why does one still hope for what he sees? You and I wish we could see this. This is hope. Wishing. I'm hoping and wishing. That one day this, this plague will be behind us and our church will grow back to where it was. Can you say amen? Yeah. And people will fear, will not fear, but have faith when they come back. Because what's keeping people from coming to church right now is fear. Am I saying the truth? It's fear that's keeping them from coming back. Fear that they might get the strain of the COVID. Fear that they might get sick and die. That's why half of the church or more has not come back. Because of Fear. Fear. One day God will wipe away every tear and take away all your pain. Revelation 21, 4. Our hope is waiting for Christ. Romans 8, 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. What do we wait for? The returning of Jesus Christ, our blessed Redeemer, our hope. Well, we need to get back in the hoping business. Am I right? We need to get back to hoping again and wishing again. Hello. 
Because this is what God truly wants us to do. Is hope for the return of our blessed Redeemer. The more you and I hope for his longing, for his return, the quicker God will usher in that event. I believe that about you. But the Bible does say that he will come in a day and an hour we think not. And what is the perfect hour for Christ to come? It is today. When no one is really watching and waiting for him. But just a very few. You tell someone Jesus is coming. Oh, I heard that a thousand years ago. I heard that 50 years ago. I heard that back in 1970 he was coming. In 1980 he was coming. In 1990 he was coming. Finally I gave up when 2000 came. In 2010 I really gave up. In 2020 I just don't believe he's coming. This is what the Apostle Peter said. In the last day they will say to themselves. We have heard it all of our lives. And then he said like a thief. In the night, he will come and snatch away his people. How many are part of that blessed hope? Yeah. Look around, you lot of empty seats, some don't believe in God. <laughs> Our hope is waiting for Christ, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for that to persevere. The Lord is good, a stronghold, in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Nahum 1 and 7. Let me do one more. Lastly, our hope is in Christ. Galatians 5, verse 5. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Some people say, well, God has forgot us. <laughs> no. no. If he had forgot us, we'd all be dead by now. The spirit is what constrains evil from completely taking over. The spirit is what restraineth evil. If it wasn't for God, this place would be up in smoke already. We'd already be overthrown by another nation or nations. Can you say amen? Or amen? We would be. We'd done been overthrown. Or fighting to the point of keeping from becoming overthrown. You know why they don't attack America? Because of Christians. That's one of the biggest reasons. The spirit restraineth them. It holds it back. Can you say amen? amen. Aren't you glad for the Holy Ghost? Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1 and 13. Gird up the loins of your mind. Pull your clothing. Come on. Place the helmet of salvation on. Protect your mind. From the spirit of lawlessness and be sober in the Lord. Amen, amen. I believe that was the last one. You could leave it there for now. Would you pray with me? Father God, I thank you for anointing me again as a preacher of the gospel. 
I've been preaching the gospel ever since the age of 16. I'll be 65 years soon. So I preached a long, long time now. About 50 years almost. Almost a half a century. I want to say thank you for choosing me at such an early age to preach this gospel. I thank you for allowing me to come into people's lives and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ who gave his life that we can have life more abundantly and preach with such conviction. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling me with your spirit many, 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 many years ago. I, I thank you for everything you've done for me. And I thank you for helping every one of these people that not only attend our church, but watch us. And I pray a special prayer and blessing upon all of them. As much as you anointed me, as much as you blessed me, I bless them the same way. That they know that it's God doing these wonderful things in all their lives. My prayer is that they find Jesus Christ and that they will confess him. Confess all their sins to him. And all they have to say is, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. I am so sorry for what I've done and what I did. I can never pay it back. It's totally impossible for me to pay the debt. But because of you, you can forgive it and forgive me and cleanse me. And that I can be a better person now. Would you do that? Would you ask Jesus Christ into your life? Would you ask him today to forgive you of all your sins? Would you ask him right now and say, please, Father, Forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Please, God, please forgive me. That's all you have to say is please forgive me. Please forgive me, God. As Pastor Cruz prayed his prayer of faith, please forgive me and cleanse me. In Jesus' name. How many believe that God has forgiven you? Oh. Man, I feel light as a feather. How about you? Yes. Because of Jesus Christ. Let's see. Tuesday, between the hour of 1 p.m. and 2 p.m., we have prayer here at the church. Pray with me during that time, wherever you're at. Wednesday night from 6.30 to 7.30, we have Bible study. And we're in the book of Revelation. We're in chapter 3. Probably should record it because people probably would follow along at home. But I run out of man and lady power. <laughs> I could only stretch it so far like a rubber band. But after a while, if I stretch it too far, it snaps. <laughs> so I don't want to put no more burden on them. <laughs> but pray... Because the harvest is truly wide, but the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth more laborers. Can you say amen? So pray that the Lord will give us more people to help us in these areas. Amen. All right. Would you stand with me as we... Prepare for your party. May the Lord bless us again. And we bless our Lord. We bless his holy name. We praise and worship him and glorify him.
Would you raise your hands up and say, I glorify you, my Lord. I glorify you and worship you. And I honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please go with us and bring us back to the next time as we come together in the name of the Lord. In that wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we give God praise and honor. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming today.